Hello and welcome back to Doctor's Garage. So today's video, I started doing something really simple, just fit the steering guard. I ended up cutting off a few of the wrong things with an angle grinder. It ended up me taking the whole front end of the car apart, which I've never done before, but it's just easier if I show you exactly what happened. Today you join me back with my Defender 90 and today I'm going to be showing you how to put a new steering guard on your Defender. Now, as you can see on my car, this is an old steering guard that the plate fell off. It's still got the cage and the frame around it. That needs to come off. It's quite rusted on with some of these bolts, so we're going to need to angle grind some of them off. And then we're going to be fitting a brand new steering guard from ORE and that will help improve the cosmetic appearance in front of this car so it won't be as rusted and look quite as bad, but it'll also help protect the steering components because these cars are really vulnerable to any damage that can happen when you go off-road. So this is a steering guard we're going to be fitting today. It's from a British company called ORE. They make really, really good components for defenders. They do steering guards. They also do a rear wheel carrier, which I need to look at because I'm worried my rear door is going to crack off at some point with this tire I've got on it. So I'm going to look at that next. But this is the steering guard. And this is an amazing piece of kit because it's really, really well made. It's really solidly built. Really impressed actually with the build quality of it. Um, it's also made out of a tank grade coating that they have on the front of it. And that protects it from any scratches and scuffs. Just makes it really durable. It means it also looks really good. It's in this kind of satin black finish. So I'm really excited to see what this looks like on my car. Help tidy up the front of this and also give it that protection that it needs. So if we look under the car, what you can see is this is the old steering guard right here. And this is the part that needs to come off so we can install the new one through these bolt points just here. Same on this side too, just need to cut those bolts out and then we can take this off. Because at the moment, as you can see, it's pretty rusted, it's pretty bent and we're going to put a nice new one on today. So I've got the old guard, the old steering component bit off, which is all bent and this is what I'm replacing. However, I made a bit of a mistake here. So I've ended up cutting the bolt head off here and also here. And this is actually um, a support structure and I shouldn't have cut this off. However, I have, and on the other side as well, if you look, you can see there and there, it's been cut off. It shouldn't have been, because as you can see, that links the steering components to the chassis. So not great. This bolt here is actually where all the steering guard components go onto. But because the frame was covering all this, you couldn't get inside to actually do anything. So that is going to need some sorting. Right, so it's a couple of days later since that last clip. I've managed to order the bolts that I need. I'll put the link for where they get them from in the description below. Um, and essentially, it's the panard rod bolts that I ended up cutting off the ends of because essentially that old steering guard, you couldn't quite get it off without doing that. So I've ground them off. Probably shouldn't have done that in hindsight, but I have managed to do that. So I'm going to be fixing that today and then getting the new steering guard put on. So these two bolts I've got here are going to sort that out. These are the ones I cut off by accident because I couldn't get the um, old steering guard frame off. But essentially, this is the panard rod that goes up here and it has a bolt here and a bolt here, which is what I've snapped off. Basically, this long one goes in the bottom, I believe, and the short one in the top. So I'm going to fix that now. And then what we can do is get on to fixing the steering guard, which actually hooks onto the little bolt here and then this one here and that's how you get the, the start of the frame for the ORE steering guard so that's what I'm going to be doing next. Oh dear. So just when I've been knocking that second bolt through the top of the panel rod, we start, start getting some dripping of um, coolant fluid, which has come down from there somewhere. So I've obviously dislodged a hose or something like that. So that's the next challenge to try and get to the top of there and find out what the problem is. So when I was looking, things were worse than I thought. We've got the radiator here. I've taken the fan out and actually I bought a couple of really good tools to do that. Because you have to stop the, uh, the pulley belts with that and then twist the locking nut off with the other spanner. And that was really useful. And both of those parts were from, I can't remember, I'll put them in the link below. But essentially that was where the fan was. Now I can see right down. And if I look down there, you can see where that bolt has hit the radiator. I think that's what's causing the problem. So what I need to do is take this radiator out. I've disconnected the hose up here, the small little hose on there, and the one just here. So they've been taken off now. Now what I'm doing is slowly unscrewing the radiator on some of these fixtures and fittings. As I say, it's the first time I've ever done anything like this, so let's see how it goes. To so get a little further along the job, I've realized that you cannot remove the radiator without removing the intercooler very easily, because as you can see, 
they are clipped together here and here, which is not what I've read online. So I'm gonna to have to remove both of them together to be able to get the radiator out. You can see here, it's pretty filthy inside, pretty rusted in a lot of parts. Um, but uh, yeah, we are getting there. I had to take the intercooler hoses off as well. Um, the airflow hoses for the intercooler to be able to get to it. So it's turning out to be a much bigger job than I thought. So I've just removed the intercooler and the radiator. These are all the hoses that are left. Take them all out, it's pretty empty now. It's pretty filthy, it's quite a good chance actually to clean up some of all the stuff that's in the front of the car. And here they are, so this is the radiator here, all the cooler in the bucket. And this is the intercooler, the old intercooler. And interestingly, I haven't owned this car from new, and as you can see on here, 31st of a 10th, 06. That's when this intercooler was made, so it's 14 years old. So after taking that out, what I was originally looking for was that bolt that I banged through, and as you can see, came straight through and cracked into the radiator, which started all this mess. Um, you can see where it's gone through just there. So this is where it's cracked. It just pushed the radiator open a little bit, and that's where it was leaking from. And that was the start of all this problem. And the culprit bolt that did it all is just here. Finally, we can get it out. And that's what broke my radiator. Coming through there, you can see the other one on that side. So after taking apart the radiator, the intercooler, I've decided to not put back the original Defender equipment and actually put some more upgraded equipment in. So I'm be visiting a specialist shop in the next video and fitting some really nice new parts to see how that affects the performance of my Defender. If you're new to the channel, please remember to click subscribe down here Give me a like and leave me a comment in the box below. If you're interested in Defenders in general, check out my other videos. I have a Discovery 5 as well on the channel, which recently I also messed up. So you can check that out on my channel as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video.